Hi teachers, today I'm going to be giving you an overview and tour of my Google Classroom and talking a little bit about how I post assignments and how I'm going to be having Google Classroom work with my primary students. So as soon as you get into your Google Classroom as a teacher, you will be on the stream section of your Google Classroom. You can tell what page you're on by the tab at the top. So each week with my students, I'm planning on posting a message here on my stream. It's kind of like posting a status on social media and sharing our weekly schedule with students. This isn't anything that I'm having my students um, require to follow um, to a T, but I'm hoping that it will be something to help parents pace their students throughout the week so they don't feel like they have to complete all of their math or reading in one day. I want to try to create some kind of a schedule for students at home. So there's a sample of that. You can pause if you need to take a closer look. The most important tab I found to work with is the classwork tab. So that's where I'm going to be spending most of my time with you today. On the classwork tab, I've created different headings um, to show the subject areas that we work with most in school. So um, I'm going to show you how to create those headings and two different types of assignments so that way you can organize your classroom from week to week. So on my math tab, I've created two different types of assignments. This first one is the clipboard, which is the traditional assignment. So if you click the create tab up top, you can create an assignment. When I'm titling mine, I'm trying to start all of them with the week number and subject so that it's very clear what goes where and then what the topic is. So coin identification will be week three. And then on the right hand side, this is what shows the heading on my classwork tab. So this is math right now. If you don't have topics yet, you can click create topic and it will let you type one in. I'm choosing to keep mine ungraded unless it's something, a Google Doc that students will be submitting. And then over here, um, this is my instruction section. I'm trying to keep pretty short and sweet instructions, um, but outline like what, what students need to be working on. So I might outline that students need to work on certain workbook pages. And then I may link a few YouTube videos or BrainPot videos and then exactly how students can get access to it. Um, at the bottom, I can also attach different things. You can attach YouTube videos directly, link things from your Google Drive. Um, these are easy tools to experiment with. And then this button is for creating Google Docs to attach to it. So I'll make a separate video about how you can um, attach Google Docs and have students use those or not when they're completing their work for you. At the top, um, this is a pretty important section. You can choose right here if you would like to assign this to students and it will appear on your, on your stream of your classroom. Or you can see right here that it's saved. If I X out of this section right now, this will be saved as a draft. If I hit assign, it will be posted to my students right now. Um, you can also click the little drop down arrow and choose um, right there what to do with this assignment. It's really handy that you can schedule them. So if you know that you want everything to go up on Monday morning for a week, then you are all set. So I'm gonna make my due date the end of week three. And then I can go ahead and schedule it to post at the beginning of week three. Super simple. The other important um, type of assignment that you may need to create is material. So when you're making materials, I don't title these with the weeks. I like to think of these just as resources that my students can always be using. So I chose reading as my topic and I might title this as reading resources. And here I might um, have links for my students to be able to get to Raz Kids, to get to Epic, and then I might want to attach other items like their retelling rubric um, or just other things that students may want to use from home. So this is just a way for you to share things with students that are not specific. As you can see over here, there's no option to add a due date or do any kind of grading. So this is an item that I can share right away with my students. <laughs> There's quizzes up here um, that you can create for students on Google Classroom. 
Um, a question is really handy. I'm planning on using questions with my students on a weekly basis. They can be questions that students can type or multiple choice. So I think this is a great way um, to do a morning meeting or just a quick kind of check-in with students. You could ask students, how are you feeling today? Um, how do you feel about online learning? And then give students options. I enjoy online learning. I am still getting used to it. And then maybe I miss being at school, but I am adjusting. And then you can choose whether or not students can see summaries. And then that doesn't need a grade because it's just a morning check-in to ask for students. And again, those same schedules with how you would like to present the information to your students. Um, so very simple. What you may be wondering is me and my team are planning um, very similar content each week. Is there a way for us to share it with each other? And the answer is yes. So I'm going to show you how to do that. In order to share with your colleagues, you will need to go over to the people tab and you need to add a colleague that you would like to share with as a co-teacher. They will be able to change things in your classroom, but this is the only way that you can share with them. So I've added Hannah as a co-teacher in my classroom. You can only add people that are in the same organization that you are in. So I can only add Hannah because she's the only other organize and educate email address. After you've shared with someone, you will go to create and then reuse post. When you are on reuse post, the first time that you use it, you will see a list of any classes that you are a part of in any way, any classes that you've archived, any classes that you have been, um, that you are a co-teacher on. I can reuse any posts from my very own class. So right now I can see, um, I have sight word sentences for weeks two and three. If I know I'm going to need sight word sentences for week four, I can choose this post I need the attachments again because it's an important part of sight word sentences and hit reuse. It will make a copy of that post for me with all the attachments and everything involved. I can change out my sight words. Maybe they are those, would, because, and what. I can make it say week four. I can schedule it and I am good to go. It's saved as a draft, so I'm done. Um, the same thing goes when you are reusing posts. You can simply um, tap into another teacher's class from this screen here. They will be listed and it will tell you who the main teacher is in that class and it is that easy. Please let me know what questions you have as you're starting to explore in Google Classroom. Um, like I said, I will share more videos about creating different documents that students can use as assignments and different ways that you can productively share materials with your students, how you can um, hold students accountable from afar, and more.